discussion of uh, techniques and tricks that are all based on uh, the overtone series and today is a big one a huge one uh, altissimo um, now for you intermediate or advanced players out there you guys have already been working on altissimo so you don't probably need to hear this um, but for anyone beginning uh, the saxophone or that's worked on a little bit and is always wondering about how people can play all these really high notes when the saxophone fingering charts that you have only go up to this high F. Uh, this lesson is for you. Um, and especially with my uh, beatbox sax technique that I do, um, I find it's really important because I like to use the, uh, the both the low end of the extreme, the l extreme low end of the horn uh, for my bass tones, and then the extreme high end of the horn. So a lot of the altissimo stuff for melodies, just to provide that contrast between bass line and melody. Uh, so it's been really big for me. Um, now, uh, what what exactly is altissimo? Altissimo is kind of a fancy word for the highest register of the saxophone, but more specifically, it's for the notes of the saxophone that players have developed that go beyond, meaning above, maybe what the saxophone was originally created to do. Um, Adolf Sax, the inventor, uh, made the saxophone to only be two and a half octaves, from a low B flat up to a high F, which is done with these palm keys on the side, or there's a front F. Um, but sax players uh, since then have found ways to play much higher, going at least an octave above, if not more. Um, and it's since become a staple of saxophone repertoire. Basically, you need to be able to do this altissimo stuff. And for good reason. Uh, two and a half octaves isn't that great. Uh, so expanding the range uh, is a great thing. Um, and plus, there are a lot of really cool things you can do with that altissimo up there besides just playing notes. And I'll talk about those in later uh, lessons. Uh, so to get started, uh, first of all, I can't emphasize enough how important the overtone series working on those as a sax player is to developing altissimo. Um, so go back to that tutorial that I did a couple weeks ago uh, and see if you can develop uh, those large those intervals of the overtones from getting like a low B flat to the higher B flat to an F above that to a B flat above that to a D above that to an F and so forth. Once you can get above that F, that's your altissimo range, and you'll have no problem popping out these fingerings. It's just then uh, looking up kind of the appropriate fingering for your saxophone, whether that's tenor alto, or just the make and model. Um, and you can check out, uh, there's lots of sites. Um, if you just Google altissimo fingerings for tenor or alto, they're slightly different for the different saxophones. Uh, a great website that I've used is uh, WFG Woodwind Fingering Guide. Dot woodwinds .com. Um, just type in woodwind fingerings for the saxophone and then there's a ton of different altissimo fingerings because there aren't just really standard fingerings it's kind of different depending on the person and on the saxophone so you can kind of check those out and see which ones work best for you uh, so today I just want to talk about uh, some basics into getting started with the altissimo so the way I begin this um, is first talking about these front fingerings for a high E and F um, many of you already can play up to your high F on the saxophone using these side palm keys and of course this high F key down here. However, um, there are some alternate fingers that probably once again a lot of you already know about. Um, a high E, instead of doing these pa two palm keys here, instead of doing the D and then the E flat and up here, see if you can play this front E which involves this fork F up here and then a G fingering and the octave. Um, this is going to be helpful for a couple reasons. One, uh, a lot of the lower altissimo notes involve this front F, and so if you're playing up to it, if you do already using this E, it makes it a lot easier to transition rather than sliding from these um, kind of awkward palm keys and this, for, this key down here. Um, but also, to get out this high E and F, it's kind of like a good training wheel uh, session for getting altissimo out. Let me show you what I mean. So play your side E and I'm doing it on tenor you can do the same thing on alto it'll be a higher note of course now see if you can get that front E that I was talking about with that fork F otherwise fingering the G it's going to 
to sound a little different, and it might be a challenge. Some of you, it might sound like this. It might be hard to get that out. Uh, so this comes back to the voicing and what your tongue is doing. Uh, now, the embouchure, you want to be just as firm as you've normally done. Don't You don't want to bite harder because that's kind of a cheating way that's not really as effective. It's going to hurt after a while, and it won't let, allow you to have as much freedom, and it won't allow you to go as high. So I encourage you, don't bite harder. So still be firm around the corners and around your mouth. Uh, play with a ton of air down here from the diaphragm. Uh, but the tongue, now a big thing about getting altissimo in these higher notes on the saxophone, I find is that I arch the back of my tongue even more and kind of push it forward towards the front, creating this kind of just this really tight air pressure in your mouth. It's kind of like taking a hose and squeezing the flow, making it pressure so that the water sprays further uh, because you're going to need that quick air, uh, quick fast air to get these high notes out. Uh, so, you're once again, you're arching the back of your tongue like this. See how the, the kind of the tip of my tongue is kind of down and the back is arched and pushing it forward, kind of like as if you're whistling. When you go high, when I whistle, the back part comes up and it kind of pushes forward. Same exact thing with getting these notes out. So experiment that. If you're having trouble getting that front E or F out, Try, really think about that tongue, and it's weird because you can't see what's going on. We don't usually think about what's going on there. So think of that E vowel sound, E, and even extreme E, the back of that tongue is just way up there, and it's just creating a very small space. And you're going to find as you go higher, you want to get that tongue even as close as possible where it's almost touching that reed, just creating such a thin stream of air, powerful air to shoot through. So I can't emphasize that enough. So once you do that, instead of getting this sound, you'll get and then you get a clear sound. Then move up to an F, which is doing this front fingering and then doing like an A fingering. So you have your middle finger down. It's the same as your side F. Once you can have that, that's great. Now let's go into the first altissimo note. Now a lot of horns, particularly modern horns, uh, they've since developed an F sharp key, a high F sharp key. And that usually goes right here. Now this is an older Mark VI tenor sax, so I don't have that. Um, yes, it has this little alternate F sharp, but that's for something different. Uh, so on these older horns, you have to use this altissimo fingering. Now, those of you that do have that high F sharp key, I would encourage if you're trying to develop your altissimo, I would say don't even use that or don't use it for just this little kind of practice session uh, because this is going to kind of work on, if you can get this high F sharp out, you're a little more on your way to developing some of these other altissimo notes. Um, so once again, we're going to use this front F up here, the fork F and uh, your C key. And now we're going to add the B flat key. I have these wooden extenders just because my fingers are so freakishly long. But we're just going to add that B flat key. So see if you can play an F, add that B flat key. Think of that pressure with the tongue jamming forward and up in the back. Uh, see if you can get out that F sharp. <laughs> If you can get that, see if you can start to tongue it. And then if you can get that, see if you can just start on the F sharp. Um, now, if this is tough, once again, I'm going really fast through these tutorials, and this is just an introduction. So you're going to need to spend a lot of time on this. Altissimo is not easy. But the great news is once you start to get the first couple of altissimos, altissimo notes, the rest, is, it's just like something's broken through, and you're just you'll see it's just like, freedom you'll just be able to climb up high and you just need to find kind of the correct fingers and you'll be surprised at how quickly you can get those other notes it's pretty cool but until you crack that uh, it's kind of difficult and once again that's really always go back to these overtones and just do those as a warm-up see how high you can get and clear you can get as those um, so now you've got your F sharp thankfully on the saxophone that's not too difficult and a lot of times you can actually get it out without using totally correct voicings here so the real challenge is going to be your altissimo G. Can you get that? Now on tenor and alto, I found that it's a little bit different. On tenor, so I'll talk about both. Tenor, so we've got our high F sharp. On tenor, to get the G, you lift up your middle finger and you just have the fork F and then the side B flat. That's your high 
G. And yes, it's kind of a fairly difficult one. A lot of people find A's to be easier. Um, but anyways, you gotta learn that G, it's really important. Um, on alto, I found, when I use my uh, Yamaha alto, uh, I find that you use the F sharp, sorry, our uh, altissimo F sharp fingering, but then you put down the F key, the F, low F key, and raise the middle finger. So with both of them, you raise that middle finger, but tenor, you leave it like this, alto, you put down this F. So you have the side B flat and the F. Kind of weird, but you'll get used to it. That's the G fingering. So see if you can slur now from that F, that front F, to the F sharp, to the G. And think once again of that tongue just ramming just so close to the reed. You might even find that it's easier to actually tongue tongue the note because that keeps your, your tongue extra close to the reed. Just lots of just it's just very tight in there creating that fast airflow so here's the f f sharp and g <laughs> and once you can get that see if you can tongue the g once you can do that see if you can start on the g uh, once you've got that, the sky's the limit. You can find that you'll keep going up. Um, there's, check out that website I mentioned, the Woodwind Fingering Guide, or just other uh, websites. Just type in Altismo G10 or Google Image Search. You'll find tons of things. Um, another one that I would say is maybe an easier one that you might try, I might suggest trying if you're having trouble getting the G, uh, is that Altismo A. I find that that one's easier. Um, people do different fingerings for this one, like all of them. Uh, but a common one is putting down, kind of like your G fingering, but with your B key up. So your octaves down and your second and third are down. I actually use that fingering plus one, two, three of the right hand to get my high A. Uh, and always check it, of course, with the octave below. Make sure you can hear the note you're going towards. So here's my middle A on the sax. And the altissimo A. Once you do that, like I said, look up the fingerings, you'll find the sky's the limit. And so forth, that was up to a G, and you can keep going on. So hopefully that will help. These techniques are the same for tenor and alto and soprano and berry. Um, it's just the fingerings might be slightly different as I already mentioned. So best of luck, it's a, cause worthy of pursuing uh, so keep up with the altissimo playing um, and I'll see you guys next week so good luck